<laughs> okay, uh, so I'm here to talk to you about how to RPM stuff, uh, which is basically when you use apt or get, sorry, when you use apt or yum to install stuff, you're installing an RPM. Uh, so this is how to build your own. If you just use Windows, this talk's going to be a little bit boring. Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk about why you should be building your own RPMs and what you should be building um, at the end of the talk, just because it'll be a bit easier to understand then. And I'm just going to run really quickly how to build a, your own Nginx RPM. Um, so there's a so piece of software called RPM Build. You install that. It expects all the stuff that it needs to be in a directory that's got these subdirectories in. Um, you bung all the source files in there, as well as any other config files. You bung the spec file, which is basically equivalent to a make file in the specs directory. And then it will build stuff in build, package it into the build root. And then finally, all the stuff will come out into the RPMS folder. Um, can everybody read that? No. Oops, that's too big. Um, so this is a spec file. Um, it's a cross between bash and make, which is just one of the worst ideas in the history of mankind, to be honest. Uh, I'm just going to go through it. Basically, whenever you want to create a spec file, what you want to do is go on the internet, search for a spec file that already exists, modify it to your exact needs. But the few bits that you need to know about are you set up some version names, and then you set up the source files, which are which will be the actual source for Nginx, uh, as well as any config files. Then other stuff that nobody really understands. <laughs> uh, and then this is a great example of how awesome the spec script language is. These two lines, the first one extracts the source from the, the zip file, and the second one, obviously, extracts the... Uh, another bit of source code from a different zip file into the same same directory as the first directory, uh, first directory that was extracted without overwriting and without deleting the contents of that directory first. That's pretty obvious, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so basically when you're doing this, you need to refer to stuff online of what exactly it's doing. The rest of the spec file is actually pretty simple. Uh, build stuff is just compiling Nginx, which is looks scary, but is actually really simple. Um, and, yeah, when it does the install, it actually installs all the files into the build root. So it extracts the zip files into build directory, builds Nginx there, then extract, then installs it into the build root uh, folder in the subdirectory. The reason for that is that later on, do -be -do -be -do, you get to this file section. Every file that is gets built into the build root directory needs to be listed in the files section with uh, permissions and uh, which have some default and where it's going to exist on the uh, installed system. The basically, if there's any files that uh, are present in the build root that aren't listed in the files uh, list, it will just fail with an error message after like 20 minutes, which is annoying trying to, when you're just trying to iterate through the, the things that you've missed. Um, the, these two sections are also good um, or useful. You can define a pre and uh, post install steps. So after you've installed the Nginx, it's quite useful to turn it on, so it's actually doing something on the system. And so you can just define any script you like in the uh, pre or post step, and it will do that when it's installed. So assuming that you've um, configured the spec file correctly, you just uh, run the RPM build tool, and it will uh, build, build the software, package it into an RPM, uh, add the scripts that need to be run, and stick it into the RPMS directory. Um, once it's done that, you need to find where you are in your notes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do. Do. 
once you've done that, you probably want to copy it to a separate directory so it doesn't get uh, deleted. It's just like a permanent place where the RPM is going to live. Uh, I'm not going to go into details on this, but then you need to run a signing tool because to sign the, the software uh, so that it, you can check that it is what you think it is when you go to install it. And then there's another piece of software that uh, scans the directory that contains your RPMs uh, and generates a list of all the stuff that you have available. So say, you know when you do yum search or apt cache search for a piece of software, it, uh, that searches the repos for the list of all the pieces of software that's available. So the tool, that, the tool scans your repo directory and builds up these database files uh, that contains all the information. Uh, and then, oops, there we go. And then just to add your own repo, um, it's a really simple uh, piece of configuration. Just You just dump that in the uh, yum.d directory, and next time yum runs, it will read it and use it. Um, and yeah, you definitely, definitely, definitely want to have the GPG check enabled. Otherwise, you could be installing um, any piece of software. Uh, oh yeah, and if... Obviously, you need to store it somewhere online. I just use Amazon S3. Just create a, a, uh, a website hosted in a bucket and just upload all the files to it. That's all that's needed. Uh, so that's how to create RPMs. It, once you actually get used to doing it, it's really simple. But until you get used to doing it, it looks a bit scary. Um, so what should you be... RPMing. Um, so Nginx is not like PHP. You can't add extensions to Nginx uh, when you run it. You have to uh, add in any modules that you want to, to, it to have at compile time. So the standard version of Nginx you, that you use downloaded from the web works fine, but it doesn't have n some of the nice modules like uh, video streaming or up fair uh, upstream server balancing. Those are modules that are available, but they have to be compiled in. Uh, there's other stuff that you should be available when you build your own RPM. So Nginx has uh, error screens that look just like blank pages by default. If you build your own RPM, you can stick your custom error screens in, in with it. And then when you install it, it will have your company's uh, dressing on the error screens rather than just a blank white page. Um, Composer and other, any other standalone tools that you have, in my opinion, should be controlled through RPMs. Just It just allows you to make sure that everybody on your team's got the same version and all the servers are using the same version, as opposed to just downloading a random version from the internet. Um, one very quick thing, don't use Semver when you're creating your own RPMs. It's, uh, Semver works when you've just got a simple library. It just doesn't work when you're taking multiple things, combining them together, adding config. Just use like Nginx, front end, and the date that it's you built it. It stops you having to generate some sort of version names, and it makes a lot more sense to use. Uh, and it also, the final reason to do it is to make Chef and Puppet a lot easier to use. So rather than that, the reason I started doing this myself was I tried to get Chef to build Nginx. I downloaded the Chef script to do it, and it was like 40 files of just incomprehensible stuff, and I just didn't... It didn't work straight away, and I didn't want to sit through, go through 40 files to try and figure out what was wrong. Doing it with... Um, doing your own RPMs moves all the complexity out from Chef, Puppet, or Docker, but it also... which is good to start with, but it also means that you can change between using those Chef and Puppet for different projects. So you, all the knowledge of how to build your uh, piece, bits of software are is separate, so it makes it a lot easier to switch between them. Uh, and the final benefit is that it means that there's a lot less software needed on your server. So you don't, instead of when you have to, when you want to deploy something, having to install GCC on the server to compile Nginx locally, you can just have a, a machine for building stuff, to build it in one place, and then you've got a much smaller amount of software to deploy to servers. And that's me.